Hey YouTube, Scotty Do All here, and today I'm going to show you how to change a heater core the right way on this O2 PT Cruiser. Let's get going. I know some of you guys might be saying, come on Scotty, it's a O2 PT Cruiser, it's already 16 years old, what are you even doing bothering with it? But I still see a lot of them on the road, and uh, all the videos I've seen of people changing the heater cores out, they take the really wrong route, I mean like six hours of taking the whole dashboard apart and everything. You even see some of them cut a, cut a hole in the firewall. Um, you know, well-meaning people that are just uh, taking a long route about it. You can do it the right way, faster and easier, and get everything done like the pros do. So, let's get going. Hey everybody, before I dive into today's project, I want to give a great big shout out to Scotty Duell's number one fan, Malachi. Hey Malachi, thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Now let's dig into that car. So when I started watching the videos because I had a heater core that was leaking, I started checking out videos on how to how to change this thing. How do you get in there? So a bunch of, bunch of videos, they have uh, people, they take the whole dashboard apart. It takes like six hours or so. So I started looking at that and thinking, you know, how would it, how did the pros do it? How does the guy at the, uh, at the dealership uh, do it? They're not going to be taking the whole dashboard apart. And I found that I can take this whole uh, dashboard out and get it all done. And I think if I counted right, there's 17 bolts you gotta undo to take it out. Take you about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And uh, it's a whole lot easier than taking your whole dashboard apart. So the first thing we gotta do here is um, we gotta get the, the console out. You gotta take out the console because underneath, in the back, underneath the, uh, your bottom cubby hole there, there's two bolts in the back there that got to come out. There's two bolts underneath there. There's in your, uh, by the door panel along this, uh, along the side here, there's three on each side if I remember right. You got to take the top dashboard off because there's about five or six bolts that are on right up against the, the windshield that just hold the, the plastic parts on. We take off the center console, just because there's three bolts in there, and that uh, three screws actually, to uh, take that apart. That lets you take the dashboard off. There's a couple other bolts here and there, and the whole thing folds over in one unit. No taking apart your your uh, your airbags and doing all that stuff. You don't even have to undo any wires. So this is a, a really nice way to do it. So first thing we got to do is we got to get that center console out of there. Okay, so I'm going to make a second video on how to take out the console, show you how to get that e-brake lever all the way up, by the way. It's just a simple little trick on how to do it. So you can check that video out up here, and I'll set a link to that. And let's get back to taking out this dash. Okay, so now for what we actually have to take apart on this to actually get the, the uh, dashboard to come off in one piece, we are going to pop off these, these switches, just like we did on the back one. Same type of thing. You take a, a screwdriver, you may have a plastic thing, just pop those off, that'll get that off. Then you take this part here, actually, sorry, you're gonna take all your, your knobs off and those just pull straight out with a good grip. Maybe, yep, those all just pull straight out like that. You take all four of those out and then you take a screwdriver, something very gently, and you pop in the back of that. This whole console center piece comes out We'll take that out, then down the bottom here, right by where your feet go. This panel's gonna come off to get to a screw. Those just pull right from the back. You kind of get your kind of get your fingers in behind the where the carpet is and just pull those straight out. There's like three clips in there. So those just pop out. They kind of twist a little bit in the top. Like that. And as you can see, there's just a couple little, little clippy things there and there. Those just pull straight out. Same thing on the other side, right where your uh, your hood latch is. And then we're gonna take out the glove box. And just tip it down. Actually, you can if you're careful, you don't even have to unload it. They got two little uh, push button things in there that you just kind of slide them in and they got two little stoppers that pull out. And then you're just going to take these two screws out in there 
and this uh, this side cover is gonna gonna come off. So you want to get two of, both of those off, and I'm gonna do that, and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so once we take the um, once we take the the power window switch out, there's a screw right there that we want to get to before we start prying on this this gauge cluster very very much. The console, I mean. And so once that screw is out, you can actually just reach in the hole and just tug, 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 and pull that right out. And then you'll have two screws here, one on either side of that. That releases the dash. There may be another one under here. I'm not recalling, but we'll find that out in a couple minutes. These side pillars next to your windows are going to have to come out to allow the, the dashboard to come out. Those come out really easy. You just uh, get your finger started in the top and pull straight towards the back of the car. And that old thing just slides right out. Just like that. That also makes it easier to take this side one out. So as you see, I've got the these two little pins on the side. You just kind of push them in and that allows the, the glove box to fold out. You don't have to undo any of the screws underneath or take it apart. So then you grab the bottom of the this uh, side panel and that pulls straight out like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that pops straight out. And that is done so that we can get to those. There, let me get my screwdriver pointer. And that gets you to that, those screws there. So we're gonna take off that one and that one. And that pretty much releases everything. Cause what we're really trying to do is this metal frame that's inside here behind your dashboard. That's what everything on your dashboard is connected to. And that's connected to the car. So that this is the reason why you don't have to take everything off your dashboard. You just take what's connected to the dashboard, connected to the car and disconnect two of them and everything comes off in one piece. And there's the guy we're trying to get to. Because inside there's your heater core. Okay, so on the driver's side, this um, piece underneath your steering column, that's going to have to tip down to get to the two screws that hold your, your other side panel on. You just kind of get your fingers underneath there and pull really good. Boom, you're all done. And then those, those two screws there come out. This panel comes off just like the other one. You pull it from the bottom and it tips right out. Probably you'll... Uh, Disconnect your electrical from that, and then we'll be able to take the next step. Okay, I've got all the console taken apart that needs to be taken apart. I've got the the bolts exposed here. There's three on each side. There's one that's way in there. You're going to need a deep well socket for that because it's a stud. Uh, I think that's to help you line it up easier when you put it together. Now, here's where I see a lot of the other guys doing the videos that do, they take all kind of stuff apart on the steering column. If you're, once you drop that, the, I believe it's called the kick panel, underneath the, uh, or whatever it's called, you, once you drop the, the panel underneath your steering column away, you'll be able to see inside, and there's like a U-joint right there. And on the side of the U-joint right there, there is a bolt. Um, it's directly on the driver's side of the car when the wheel is at the level position. And there's a little E-clip on it, and that they, you'll pop the E-clip off. Then you'll take the uh, undo this bolt here, push the bolt out, and that'll separate the, the steering column that's attached to the dashboard. That'll separate it from the, the shaft that drives this down to your your steering rack. So that separates the two and then you're free to tip the dash right out all in one piece. So now that everything's removed, we are able to, well, you only have two screws that are here on the side of the dashboard, that the dash cover. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the dashboard straight towards you. Do not try to pick it up. I've done that, been there, done that, broke all the tabs inside, had to re-glue them on. Thankfully, they glue pretty well if you ever happen to do that. Super glue does a good job at that. But if you grab behind here and behind here, you can pull straight out. So let me see if I can get that. Okay, we wanna do this pretty careful, especially like I said before, if you're doing this in the wintertime, these things are really brittle. They've been baking in the sun, especially this one's been 
16 years so you just got a hook behind here kind of real carefully if you can get your fingers in if you got bigger fingers sorry about that but you can reach in behind and pull straight towards you you can hear them coming apart real careful like that just pulls straight out towards you a little wiggle oh that's because they didn't take this other the other thing off the top here there we go there we go gotta remember all the steps guys okay and then that just pulls straight out it's got the uh, weather stripping attached to it okay we'll take that out in two pieces and just like that the dashboard is out you can hear how brittle it is when it flexes a little scary okay now we'll get that weather stripping out so we're gonna want that on that piece on the dash before we put it in see that that's what happens when you lift up on the dash when you try to take it out all these little guys slide in these little they're like on the, when you should get the dash off you see the little black pockets along here so all these slide in like that they slide they slide straight out this way not quite sure how to do that without breaking them but that's the way they have to come out if you try to lift up the dash at all like i did the first time i did this there you go okay that's what it takes it's all ready to come out um just now this is the part where you detach everything from the car so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go along and in that side there i'm going to take out the the three bolts that go right down the side there are appears to be four bolts that are up in the top there's these guys right here so you got one two and three and four and that will detach your dashboard from the from the firewall and then same as the other side we've got the three look like about 14 millimeter maybe 13 millimeter screws or bolts that go down the side and just that one guy back there that detaches the steering column and I'm going to detach all that. Oh, and before you get the uh, steering column in place, you want to make sure that you've got your uh, steering wheel in the full up position. That'll give you more room once you tip the dashboard down because it's going to be sitting on your seat. So that'll be that. And I think that's it. Okay, so as I'm taking the union the part for the steering wheel, the steering column, this, uh, I forgot about this part. It's a little weird this bolt actually stays still and the nut actually pulls so here's the nut and as you're undoing the bolt it's actually just sliding out that way so the nut stays in place probably for safety reasons and then as i was down here i also recalled one more thing hidden underneath here there's the last two bolts here there is one on either side. This is right behind your, uh, the bottom of your, your center console. So those two are the last two bolts that come out of there. So there's, uh, they're all half inch, oh no, 13 millimeter. Um, the ones that were up in the top of the dashboard, those were 10 millimeter. And so yeah, all the rest are 13s. You need a, a deep well to get to the top ones here. And those I leave on just a little bit. It's like like maybe half a thread left on there just so the dashboard doesn't fall towards me when I'm uh, still taking the rest of the stuff apart. So those I'll take apart when I get everything supported and ready to go. And then we'll be ready to start taking the, the, uh, the heater box out. Okay, now that the whole dashboard is ready to come apart, I thought I'd just show you what I got here. This is all the hardware it takes to take off to drop your entire dashboard. It's uh, 20 bolts uh, minus the four that it takes to take off the console. So all together, console and dashboard all done. 24 bolts, a whole lot better than a six hour teardown project that you see some of the other videos having. I'm not trying to knock those other guys, just uh, there's just a little different way to do it. 
the uh, I just couldn't imagine the dealership taking that much apart. So I started investigating a little further and found out, I think, a much better way to do it. The whole project should take you like an hour and a half, two hours. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so as usually happens, the there are some hidden bolts. And in this case, there are two of them. I hope that's it that I had forgotten about, that they are up by that union that we took apart to get the steering column out. And you can see them right there on either side. Let me get my pointer. And they are going to be those guys that are in the back there. So there's one there and one there. It's not these four. There's four of these guys here. They hold your steering column in place. There's uh, there's two up higher here and two down there. They're, they're black in this car. Uh, those are not the ones you want to take apart because that moves your steering column. You don't need to do that. So they're the two that are in the back. You can see plainly when you're looking up underneath there that they are a, they're a, a, a 13 millimeter and you can see that it connects the frame to the firewall. So hopefully that's the last two and I'm going to take those apart and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so once we get the dash taken down like this, there's two little uh, screws in the back, they look like probably like a nine millimeter, that work the actuators for your, your heating system. So once you tip the dash down, there are two small, what look to be like a number nine right there, and you pop that off and these little clips just pop right off. There's two of them. You gotta make sure you put those back in before you put your dashboard back in. And this little guy here, there's uh, some air lines here, they also come up. There's a little air, air line that goes on to this little connector here that uh, operates on the vacuum. So it's the little red and black lines that come in there. That's got to be unplugged too so you can move the dash uh, around easily. So I'm going to get those disconnected now and then we'll uh, move on to inside the engine compartment. Come up to the engine compartment. We're going to just pop this guy off. Um, get that out of the way. You, I've already done all this uh, removing just so I know exactly what to take apart for you guys. So we're going to take our overflow tank out of the way. There's only three, three, uh, these little, these little guys, number 10 sheet metal nut, and two of these that are a, uh, as you can see, a number 30 Torx bit, and those hold the, uh, hold the, the uh, AC, the AC tank right there to the, uh, to the firewall. So do not remove the AC thing until you have get it evacuated first. Because as soon as you take those bolts out, all your coolant or your, your uh, refrigerant is going to come out. And that is not good for the environment. So make sure you, before you start this project, you have your, your AC evacuated uh, professionally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, we get the, the overflow tank out of the way and right there below it right there there's one of them one of these little sheet metal nuts the other one is is uh down under there it's really hard to see that one but underneath your uh <clears throat> i guess the condenser i think it's a condenser i'm not sure the name of it but underneath this guy off to the left a little bit is another one and then over there underneath your two coolant lines let me see if i can get my hand over there underneath your two coolant lines there's another one that you actually can't even see uh you gotta kind of go by feel it's underneath that little green cap over to the driver's side a little bit i'll put a picture in of the the heater box out of the car where you can see exactly where these things are in relation to where the 
the uh, hose is connecting with the where your uh, your uh, AC goes through the wall. But there's only three of them, so you just got to take off the couple bolts, maybe four bolts, like three four bolts, I think, that hold the the uh, your overflow tank off. Get your coolant lines out of the way, and then you just there's the two long number 25s. Num uh, sorry, number 30 Torx bits that. Uh, take apart the condensing unit and then the heater box will be free from the car and you'll be able to pull it right out of there. Okay, there is one bolt here. Got that one off from the inside. But this one, they hide. They like to hide this one underneath there. Okay, once all the hardware is taken off of the engine compartment side, we just kind of give it a tug from the top here, maybe. There we go. Everything's free. Now, you may have some fluid dripping out of this, depending on how good your uh, your um, draining was. So you might want to try to catch that. There's one little vacuum line that you want to take apart there. Disconnect the vacuum line and don't forget to put it back. Okay, here we go with the, the heater box is now out of the car. It's actually been a at least a week since I've been working on this, so I'm ready to tackle this piece of it now. The next step is, with all this is to take apart, there's all these little number, actually it, it's either eight millimeter or five sixteenths. I think actually five sixteenths fits better. And these things are like just littered all over the place. They all, they connect the top and bottom half of this thing together. And the other thing that you'll need to do is I took a razor blade and cut. You can see right here, I just made a really fine slit in there where the seams come together. And you need to do that on your foam. That way you don't have to take the, the glue on, you know, take this stuff off and it'll, it will never stick back the same way again. And also, one more place, right here where your, uh, where your air, air conditioning goes through your firewall. That's another place you'll need to put a little, little cut in there like that. And that takes care of separating those two. Uh, something else that I noticed that happened while the car was sitting for too long is that the mice moved in. So while we got this thing apart, we're gonna take the motor apart also and uh, get that all cleaned out. We'll take off that squirrel cage fan or the barrel fan. We'll take that out of there and clean that all up, get the motor all cleaned up. And I'll show you a little hack that you can do if you have an issue with mice in your car. So I'm gonna work on getting this thing split in half and we'll catch back up with you. Okay, that's what it looks like all taken apart. Um, there's the top half, bottom half. Here's your, uh, your air, air conditioner coil. And we've done all this work just to take out the old one of these and put in a new one. That simple. Doesn't even have any bolts or anything in it. So, so while we get it apart, we want to clean the heater blower motor because, as you can see, the squirrels have made the uh, squirrels. The mice have made this one disgusting. They're cute, but they're disgusting little creatures. All I got to do to take the whole blower blow motor off there is there's four of these bolts here that hold the blower motor in. Undo those, the whole little piece drops right out the bottom. Clean it all up. Get it all looking good and smelling good so you don't be breathing that while you're driving around. It took 22 screws to take this thing apart. This whole thing, all the way around the whole outside edge is all screws. So it took 22 to take it apart. It only took 28 bolts to take the entire dash off the car. So the other th two little things, I think it was two. I didn't even put them back on when I did it the first time. They're these little teeny clips that are hidden underneath the foam here. They'll hold this thing together on you. You'll think something else is still bolted together. You can just pop them off. You don't need them when you put it back together. It must be something for the factory. So we're gonna uh, take this uh, 
heater motor out of there, or the blow motor, and we're gonna take that apart, and we're gonna clean that up, and we're gonna clean up, clean up that section right over there. All the gook inside there from the mice. You just uh, undo all the bolts, top half slides right off. Everything's all set after that. Then it's just uh, cleaning it all up, putting a new one back in, and starting to go backwards the other way. Put everything back together. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's put this back together. And the key to getting this in the firewall nicely is, is this little guy right here. Uh, I think it's just a drainage. It's just a, a drain line for condensation, I believe. But the key is to get that right through that little hole right there on the bottom. So once that's through there, then you can get line the bolts all up. There's only three. You got one, two, three right there. I'll point them out with arrows. And then everything else lines up. And then we'll start bolting this thing back together. Goes together a lot quicker than it came apart. Okay, now that everything's back in place, we got it's time to start putting the dashboard back in place. And so do not forget that you will absolutely hate yourself. Make sure you put these guys on this little one with the Z-Bend here. My lighting's pretty poor this time of day. But there's a little hole back there. You can hear it uh, operates a little door actuator. So when you change your temperature settings. And then your other little... Uh, little loop guy here that goes over that little pin right there and that operates your door and then they just bolt back on there I left those two in place to make sure I knew where they went so then you just put the make sure you put those two little guys two little uh, bolts back in place there and also when you put it in be sure to leave this uh, on top so you can reach it so you can reach through the uh, the console to pick it up because you're gonna have to hook this back up is a vacuum actuator for all the other stuff that goes on in there. Now when we're putting the dash back in place, be very careful down here because you've got, there's your two bolt holes there that go into those over there and you've got wires right there so this can, you want to be real careful that this doesn't act like a scissor and cut your wires and damage them down there. So be real careful of that when you're doing that. Maybe, I don't know if you got something to cover it up with, but that's real important to watch. But definitely do not forget this because you will hate yourself if you do that. So I just tried something out that made this, uh, putting the dash in really nice and easy. And those two bolts I showed you down below, the ones that were, you gotta watch out for the wires, those two, if you just put the bottom bolt in on either side, uh, the whole dash just pivots right up into place. So I got one on this side, I got one on the other side. And basically when you do that, you just take the whole dash, roll it right up into place, everything lines right up nice. So it uh, makes it real easy, no, uh, no really uh, wrestling with it at all. So you just kind of pick it up, pick the bottom up when you're putting your, uh, those two connectors in there for the, uh, the actuators for the door. And just get those in place, and then while you're working right there, put those two bolts in, and just tip the dashboard right up. It's almost like they designed it to be like that. So that works beautiful, putting those pivot bolts in the bottom. A lot easier than the first time I wrestled with it. So you just put the pivot bolts in the bottom, take the whole dash, and just roll it right up into place. Get yourself a long extension not too long but not crazy long um, and then load up one of those uh, the nuts that go onto the studs in the corner there and you just tip it up and poke the uh, that stud right there through the through the hole take this guy and just uh, tighten it on just like a screwdriver just I don't even have the ratchet on it just get it started do that on both sides Make sure you connect your speakers up there. And uh, we're all set to put the rest of the bolts in. So I'm gonna fasten this down and we'll be getting pretty close. So I guess everything was going just a little bit too smooth for me. So I had to throw something into the works. Uh, I went to get the dashboard to put the dash on the top. And underneath the dashboard in the back of the car was this little guy. This guy connects the air to blow your defroster 
it goes in there, which obviously doesn't fit when the dashboard's all in, when the whole dash is in place. So I have to take all the bolts out, probably all of them, leave the, leave the pivot bolts in the bottom, take the whole thing, take all that, tip it back, just put this silly thing back in the back in there so I can defrost my window when I when it's winter time. So that sent me back just a little bit, but everything's still going good, so it's been a good day. Okay, that's all back together. No real big deal. Uh, about a 15 minute setback. Not too bad. Let's get back to putting this whole thing together. And there we have it. The dash is all installed. Everything went nice and smooth. Uh, no surprises, just snapping it all back together. So our last step is to put in that center console. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so everything went back together nice, putting that console back together. Everything was uh, lined up really nice. So now all we got left to do is fill the fluids back up, make sure everything's sealed up nice and tight, no leaks anywhere, and we're good to go. So if this video was helpful for you, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button down below and leave any comments. Make sure you uh, let me know if this was helpful for you. Really hope uh, I did a good job at this. I tried to get all the little details in there so, uh, and you can see by the time of day that this is that this took quite a while. I'm guessing you could probably bang this job out in like three or four hours, especially if you watch the video real close because I took the time to make sure that you guys knew where all the little pieces were and all the stuff that you had to do to uh, get this in and out nice and smooth. Um, so I think probably like three or four hours. It's just a wild guess really. But uh, you, if you, like I said, you pay attention to this, you should be able to get it apart pretty quickly. And if, especially if you've got help. I did this whole job by myself. So shows you if this little guy can do it, so can you. So make sure you leave comments down below and let me know how this was for you. So this was Scotty Duwall and you guys have yourself a great day.